so for this video, we are going to cover, we have built the uh, app that's going to, that has the monitoring stanzas in them and the inputs.com file. We did that in the previous video. We are now going to actually deploy that app so that we can go get the, the data from our remote system. And so for the, I, I'm gonna go over this little slide here, troubleshooting the universal forwarder. I'm gonna actually have a video on troubleshooting the universal forwarder, but we're gonna cover this because a lot of these things you should do before you ever push the app. Just make sure things are working out right. First, you set up an index that you're gonna send it to. Does that index exist on your machine. So if I go look, we're going to clear this out here. And if I go vi input, we'll do vi, that's fine. We're writing to my index is lame training. My index is lame training. Does that index exist? So if I go to Splunk and I go look at my indexes, I put in, if I go settings, indexes, it takes me to this page. I put in the word lame training so I can filter on it. And there it is and we're good to go. So anyway, after we've done that, we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to now go to the forwarder manager and we're going to discuss how forwarding, forwarder manager works. So when you go into forwarder manager, you get there through settings, forwarder, manager and this the system needs to be set up as your deployment server it's interesting it's called a deployment server and yet the key the word here is forwarder manager anyway just understand that's the deployment server and when you come into the deployment server you'll see three different tabs here apps those are the apps you have available to deploy we'll come back to server classes and in a second and clients are all the machines that have been configured to call home to a deployment server. The way it works is you configure your machines, you tell them, hey, I want you to talk to this deployment server, and they will, if you do it right, they will show up here. And so the machine that I have my logs on that I want to pull is called, is this guy right here, this Troy recording, and we want to install the app that we just put on there, Splunk TA. Server class is kind of that mixture. What it does is that you build a server class, you give it a name, and you say everything in this server class is composed of clients and apps. And you are, and there is where you combine the two. So for us, we're going to take the app that we want to put onto it, we're going to grab this Troy recording, and we're going to make it inside a server class. First, well, we know we have the client. Do we have the app? I built that app, but if you look here, the lame YouTube TA app does not exist here. So why is that? But if I go if I go look under here, apps, there it is, lame tube YouTube TA. Why is it not located there? Well, it's important to understand how Splunk stores its files. So I'm gonna back up here. We have the op Splunk Etsy apps directory. Every app here will show up available to your Splunk instance. If the app is visible, there's a setting in apps.com that says, are you visible or not? If it's visible, it will show up here. But that is not what populates this list of apps. So I'm going to, let's go down one directory. If we do a listing, we'll notice there is a deployment apps folder. It's, you can put your apps over there and these apps are the apps that show up in deployment apps. Just so if you, um, I, I can do, I'm gonna do videos on them later, as I always say, uh, master apps, this is for your master node for indexers. So if you wanna push apps out to your an indexer cluster, your apps go here. If you have a search head cluster, your apps go here. And so there are four different folders of where you drop your apps. Apps here is for the, the instance of your enterprise, uh, Splunk Enterprise. The deployment apps is where the deployment apps goes. Uh, master apps is for your indexer uh, cluster and SH cluster is for your search head cluster. So what we need to do is we need to go back into the apps folder and we're gonna make copy. And in my case, I could move it um, over, but I'm gonna copy it because in this situation, I mentioned in my previous video, it helps to have the same logs sitting in um, so that they're there for uh, on your indexer 
this test instance that I have, my indexer and my search head are the exact same machine, same as my deployment server. So for me to have the apps, I do want that TA here so that my indexer has the TA and I need to push it out to the deployment server. So I'm gonna push it here. So I'm not gonna move it, I'm actually gonna copy it. So if I go to apps, I, um, we'll just go CP minus R lame. Go apps, lame, YouTube, TA, to deployment apps. And if I do that, now I go into deployment apps. I want to make sure that it's all got the same rights. Fortunately, because I was running as root, I gave it the same. I did not give it the right roots permissions. This is another troubleshooting thing. That's kind of why I did it. Uh, sometimes the thing won't work because your permissions are wrong. So in this case, I'm just going to chone the entire directory. Now everything is owned by me. This will work. Now it'll work. Permissions can cause you problems. That's one of the things I should have put on my troubleshooting. I didn't, but be careful of your permissions. So now in my deployment apps directory, I have that app. Let's go reload this page. Now I have 12 apps and there's my lame YouTube TA. And I'm going to hit this edit button right now. And what I'm going to do is one, you can enable the app. Two, you can say, hey, Splunk restart with after installation. And that's actually really helpful if you're making modifications to comp files. Often when you make modifications to comp files, Splunk has to be restarted. If you check this box, it will take care of it for you. When it downloads the, the app, it will restart my Splunk. So I need to add a server class. I'm going to make a new server class. I'm going to call it YouTube example. Hopefully you give it a lot better name than that, but it's for me that's exactly what I want because when I'm going to go out and when I'm done with these videos I'll go clear them out. I know exactly which what's in these. So give it a good name, and you can then add apps. And I'm going to go grab this lame to YouTube TA. That's all I want. I hit save, and then I want to go add my clients. Clients. I put up here, what you do is you can put your list. If you put a star, you'll apply it to everything. That's usually not a good practice. Usually you want to put them in specifically or some sort of regex kind of expression so that you get exactly what you're looking for. I'm just going to grab this IP address. I could take the IP address. I could take the instance name, whatever I want. Copy this, paste it in there. And now I'm going to hit preview. And when I hit preview, it's going to refresh this little table down here and it's going to still show all of my stuff but the check mark means it matched up here I could choose this match button and it will only show me the ones that match or I can hit the unmatch button to see the ones that don't match and that would help you with your include and exclude uh, rules if you're if they're a little more complicated in my case mine's pretty straightforward I just want on this one machine and that's all I want to do so I'm going to push that in just a second but I want to come in here and I'm going to do a search and reporting. I want to see these logs and sh show them coming in. So if I do index equals lame training host equals, we want to grab the name of my host, which my host is Troy recording. I'm doing this so I can see it as it comes in. So if I go host equals this, because that's the host, it's going to come back. Actually, now that I think about it, no, it's not. LS, I didn't change this correctly, so I need to go, if I go lame UFCD, lame YouTube TA, I just realized another place that I made a mistake. If I go to my inputs, nano inputs, I actually outlined my host here. I'm going to remove host. I don't want to define it. I could go put in my machine, but if I leave it blank, it's going to grab the host of the box. And that's where I actually want to have it. I don't want to have my host being come in as Splunk 
big splunk that's my indexer I, that's not the right name of the host so i want to make sure that's removed i also would want to make sure is this pointing to the correct directory and, and on this machine if i look yep it's in my home lame example there we go my sql make sure everything's spelled right and i'm good to go so if i control x yep write it now i'm okay to push that out so if everything is working right there should still be there should be nothing coming in unbalanced quotes let's put a quote on both sides and i run that i've got zero logs coming in i'm going to put this on a real time 30 second window so i can actually see these events as they start to flow in um, actually they probably won't show up because the timestamp is going to be prehistoric but anyway so let's uh, I pushed out the server class it's all going I should be able to find this on my Splunk home box soon I gonna turn this off if my logs were real time so that I'm constantly generating them this is a really good way of seeing your logs come in so it'll just be monitoring a 30 second window and any new logs coming in will just pop right there and so for example if I take this host recording off I've got my event gen running if I with my event gen on it's a totally different puppy but it's just showing it an example if as event gen starts to fire I would actually see if my event gen was running it would show up those logs all right we're going to We'll do an all time on here. Oh, look, there's my, there's a log. What was the host? It's local. What was the source type? There's my lame con. So as I was mentioning, my event gen is generating these guys. And I can then see when the logs start popping up. Nice little way of seeing whether or not stuff is coming in. Um, for me, I'm going to turn that off. We'll stop that query. Let's go back to host equals Troy recording, and we're gonna go open it up to all time because there's not much there. And we will continue to run this until my logs actually show up. But one of the things we can do, because I own both systems here, I can open this thing up here, new window, and I'm gonna go CD slash ops Splunk forwarder, Etsy apps. And I can look to see, yep, there is my lame YouTube TA. So this should be ingesting soon. All right, so we've got that thing running. We're gonna now come in here and we're just gonna look. One of the easy, we, we can do different types, types of query stats. Let's try my host equals. Grab the name of it. Put it in. I'm going to run that all time. And like that, we have two source types coming in lame con CSV and MySQL JSON. So just like that, it's and it's reading those files. There's your path. We've got them in, input into the system and they're recording. Uh, they're being ri written into the index. So we were able to, in summary, we created a class. We come into our settings, forwarder management. We make sure our app is located there. We want to put in the deployment apps. We want to make sure our client is there. Then we go to server classes. We can create a new server class. We can even see our, we can see our server class down here. <laughs> you can see that. Lame YouTube TA is in there and it's pointing it to Troy recording. When we push that out, we're able to see that the app showed up here on my local box. We could check all of its settings and away we go. I hope this helps. This is a way to use the deployment server to push out the app that we generated in the previous video to bring in a uh, bring in data from a remote system. I hope this helps you on your journey from being a lame analyst to a Splunk ninja. And if this was helpful for you, give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Um,
This video was put together as a response to a, a request on the comments below. So again, if anybody has some comments that they would like, if there's some things they'd like me to try to create for them, put videos out for them, I'm always up for giving a shot. Um, can't say exactly when I'll get them done, but uh, I will give it my I'll give my best effort to uh, put out videos that you guys want to see. Anyway, thanks so much for watching.